So Chris, I'm so glad that I'm going to have this opportunity to get to know a little bit more about you and your work. Thank you, me too. And uh, tell, me, how, tell me how Song Portrait came about. Well, um, it's an amalgamation of a lot of things, actually. So for you know the last 22 years, I've been uh, like directing, live director for concerts. I've shot over 3,000 bands in my career. Wow. Um, I'm also a musician, and I also do digital media. Wow. This is uh, some of my artwork here. Awesome. My guitar collection. Wow. And more what, paintings, more paintings. What is this over here? Uh, these are actually all of my backstage passes from all of the concerts that I've directed over yeah. my whole career. I would just come home off the road and just put my pass on the wall. And I just, bleh, bleh. I did that for 20, 24 years or whatever, 23 years. You got some good ones. Uh, Rolling Stones, That's that was awesome. Sarstock. Um, the, uh, there's just so Yeah, there's lots. Big Daddy Yankee. Wow. Yeah. So I wanted to find a way to bring all these things together into one experience. So I started um, basically painting songs. And it's over the years, it's really developed into, you know, I think a very interesting and entertaining art experience. The idea of painting songs is just, you know, really innovative. And the fact that you have bring it to life through the augmented reality piece is just mind blowing. When did you attach that, uh, you know, make that association that you wanted to bring your songs to life? Well, I wanted to um, continually build on this idea. So first I thought, okay, well, let's paint a song and then let's add some sculpture to this. So all my paintings are three dimensional. Okay. So, you know, the instruments stick out of the paintings, uh, things of that nature. So I wanted to add as many media elements as possible into this project. And then after that was created, I actually uh, met with a friend who's a digital designer. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, let's do augmented reality on this thing and really enhance this experience. <laughs> so we sort of got together and really uh, built the project from there to what it is today. Chris has been a good friend of mine for probably about 20 years now. Um, we've always had an interesting relationship where we, we're very creative, we love music, we love art, and we work in a very technical industry in general. Mm -hmm. um, so, so when he decided to cross over to be more of a traditional artist, um, I was happy to jump in and, and support um, where I could. And so originally um, with the idea of song portraits, um, he asked if I would do some projection mapping because I was doing a lot of projection mapping at that point. I did a bunch of stuff in Spain, in Germany, in China. So for, for our audience and for me hearing, like some people will hear that for the very first time, what is projection mapping? So projection mapping is where you project onto a physical surface. Okay. And then you um, distort it. Okay. Uh, creatively to, okay. to create an image to create an effect. So, so most people have seen it on large, uh, like facade projection mapping, where the, the front of a building will distort and the ah. windows will open. And yeah, so, so it's basically, if you're projection mapping, I also do virtual reality, augmented reality, um, holographics. So those are all tools. Yep. So, so it's like, if you give somebody a pencil, somebody can draw, somebody will do a stick man. Okay, so, so, correct. So what I try to do is to take the technology and make it uh, humanly accessible, make it organic, make it real, so people have a human experience with it, as opposed to just going like, well, that's a special effect. So how did it pivot from projection mapping to actual AR, or was that just because this project took so many years that you thought, no, let's do AR, because p uh, projection mapping is a thing of the past? Yeah. Well, um, Projection mapping, I think, is, is going to be continuously a part okay. of sort of creative culture. My personal journey, I had transitioned into augmented reality. So when I first started talking with Chris, um, the, the projection mapping was what I was focused on. And then I started building augmented reality software and augmented reality experiences for people. And, um, and then so I was like, let's, let's evolve this creative process into something that's a little bit more. The beautiful part with working with Chris is that the, the, the nature of, of his subject matter is 
music, which I love. Like I, I so, started, do you both share the passion for music? Yeah. So I, I started. Well, I was a musician when I was a kid. I started uh, at, in my um, what did you play? Uh, I started as a violinist, then I played piano, then I played drums in a punk band, and I wow. played a little bit of guitar, played some harp. Did you guys jam together? Uh, we have occasionally. Okay. Chris is way better than me. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a uh, hobbyist. Hobbyist? By, okay. By comparison. Um, so, so, but, but yeah, so, so I started as a music video director, and then so it was the fusion of film and, yeah. and music, which was the perfect match, uh, match for me. Um, and then beyond that, I just sort of kept every every time there was a new technology that evolves or w was um, on the horizon, I, I, I stepped sort of beyond the borders and figured out how to make it work. So for you, does does the does the band come to mind first, or the artist, or is it the instrument? Because I went to your first gallery, you talked about there being an instrument within it. What's the focal point, or are there many fo focal points? There are many, but typically I like to, because I love to do the sculpting, yep. and every instrument has a story. Okay. So, uh, you know, you could go on and on about famous instruments. So I really wanted to concentrate on the instrument itself, okay. as well as all the other elements that we discussed. But for me, I really like doing the 3D elements because I'm sort of developing you know, new plaster and lay techniques and sort of developing this, these 3D elements into my own sort of brand of artwork. So did, were there any canvases destroyed in making this art? Y yes, there is, a, you know, <laughs> like, like anything, it's, um, you know, development. Sure. There are, you know, failures along sure. the way. Uh, but yeah, there is a few canvases destroyed okay. through the process for sure. Like physically, yeah, physically, <laughs> physically punched. You did the uh, what, what was that tennis player? The, the Andre Agassi of yeah, the, of yeah, the Andre Agassi. Okay, yeah. A few of my canvases for Got sure. You. Yeah. I would have loved to see that. Uh, so, how did you choose your artists? I mean, you've got two urban artists, and how did you choose the instrument for that artist? Uh, well, as far as the urban artists, I wanted to do an urban art series for Toronto urban artists because they're some of the biggest. Yes. Acts in the world. Yep. And I wanted to sort of pay homage to that. And also, there's not a lot of urban artwork out there. There's a lot of tributes to, you know, David Bowie and, you know, Queen and all these things, but yeah. not a lot of tributes to urban artists and especially, you know, Canadian Toronto urban artists. So right. that's why I sort of undertook that project. Um, and others, really, I mean, if I like a song, I'll come up with their idea to sort of visualize the song. Because I'm a massive Beatles fan, oh, yeah. and I did all the Beatles, right? That's like amazing. there's- amazing. All right, so what's the trigger here, and what- uh, Yeah, so we got um, just some interviews inside face there. It's all zoomable too, right? Amazing. So when you move your phone around, you can turn it. Do you have a lot of creative input because this is this is your jam, right? Um, this is my jam. Yeah. So so Chris is um, an, an incredible artist that has given me free freedom to basically splash on top of what what um, what we can do. Okay. Um, but you know, always he's got the, uh, the the last signature, the check mark that says that like that's good or bad. So um, so what I saw was the Beatles was, were they landing in America and coming for the first off time the after the the Beatlemania oh, frenzy. So that's insane. so we we pulled what clips for the clip. for the Beatles series that Chris has uh, all four of them. This is where this this was supposed to be your bedroom. This is yeah, your bedroom. Yeah, this is my bedroom, yeah. which I have now converted into my art studio. Else, yeah. Okay. So again, this um, this is a uh, famous Canadian uh, um, urban artist. Okay. Cardinal Fischel, and he's got uh, triggers on his painting as well. Okay, let's take a look at that. It's, it's put best this way. When you think so about which interview is that? New York, you think about all the different I'm not sure which interview that is. It's from LA, right so when he just sure. became yeah, famous. And then you've got... Then we've got the whole Hill, song plays as well. Key signature, made his watch out of um, 24 karat gold leaf. We got the hat. I love that hat. What did it take to do this? Like, and was, what, what are the materials involved in in all of this? Is that paper mache? No, it's um, plaster, a um, little bit of foam, and it's all plaster inlay, plaster 
molded. From what I understand and from I, what, I, what I learned about you is that you had never really painted before. Is that correct? That I mean, is you're, correct. You're artistic, but had you ever put paint to canvas before this project? Never. So Other than kindergarten? <laughs> yeah, maybe in kindergarten. That's good. <laughs> okay. yeah. In kindergarten I did. But, yeah. Uh, no, uh, really, I came up with this idea first. Okay. Before I really knew how to paint. It's like sort of like putting a band together before you know how to play a song. Were so, you asleep? Were you drinking? Was it one of those, you know, stars in the sky that you're like, I want to paint this thing? Do you remember all the of moment? the above? Okay. Really, all of the above. <laughs> no, it's um, you know, I just came up with the idea from all my experience, you know, like uh, directing, uh, playing music. Uh, doing digital media, mm -hmm. uh, I just put it all together in, into this project. Work in progress. It's Louis Armstrong called "Sitting oh in the God. Sun." So we didn't see this. No, no one's seen this. Louis, look at this. This is so, incredible. Yeah, so it's a giant trumpet covered in and gold leaf. Louis Armstrong. Yeah. Why did you choose him? Um, I w there's nobody speaks jazz better than Louis. Oh my God. So I wanted to do something that was jazz. So. I wonder if there's still like. I'm sure descendants or family members of Louis Armstrong. Like, oh yeah, I'm I'm sure he's got a. Where do you want to showcase this at the next? Event? I I'd love this to be at a jazz club. Oh my god. I want this to be in a jazz club. That's my goal for this painting. That's... I'd love you to share a little bit about the family that commissioned you to uh, tell the story of of the artist that that passed. Right. So uh, I was involved uh, with the ALS Society of Canada, and I um, this uh, composer from Niagara Falls. He passed away from ALS, uh, very sadly, tragically. Mm -hmm. And amazing composer, amazing artist. Uh, and his family commissioned me to do one of his songs. Um, so it was really, really inspirational to do it. Uh, very sad sort of to do the AR and to <laughs> see his, his imagery and everything like that. But um, it was an amazing project, uh, really inspiring. Mm -hmm. um, uh, thanks to the ALS Society of Canada for, for um, working with us on that. And uh, the family uh, loved the, the project and I was really felt honored to do it. Yeah, I mean, I, I was honored to see it and I, I was honored to be part of, the, of your first show. What, how did people react to the project and what did you think about that? What did you, how did you think they were going to react? What was that experience like? I, you know, I didn't know. Like, you know, anything creative when you sort of like, you know, pull your pants down and, you know, this is me, right? This is... Uh, pretty naked. Yeah, pretty raw. Pretty, pretty raw naked, Pretty raw. Right? You always feel like sort of, you know... Well, they like well, they it. Well, they like it. Well, they not. Yeah. And the one thing I got the most was I've never seen anything like this before. That's what right. everybody said there. I've never seen this before. I've never seen this type of artwork before. I've never seen this concept before. And that really, uh, you know, when I heard that from everybody at my first show, it just really, really motivated me to, to, uh, to keep going. And To be honest, when everybody left, there was uh, Chris and I and a couple of close friends sat and just sort of like soaked up the moment and appreciated the fact that we had actually, because we'd, we, we'd been talking about that show for, for years. And wow. so to actually have it on a wall and to actually have people in the room and then to get the reaction that we got of everybody appreciating it as, as much as they did, it was amazing. Yeah, that, that was Aww. the moment. Yeah. We got to make that into a, a, a moment. <laughs> so. now, now, from my memory, speaking in particular of the Drake portrait, was, were there, the, did you paint the stairs? Were, were the stairs the one that came out or was there an instrument there? Because it, it was just so much going on at the same time. Uh, the instrument really for Drake is his microphone. So, oh, okay, um, got it. And his, I did a three-dimensional sort of ear monitor. Sure. And the stairs are in his, his video. The, okay. The song, the song is uh, That's why I felt wind. like the stairs were there because it actually came out. Yeah, the, the stairs are three-dimensional and they mm -hmm. were in his uh, his video. So I right. wanted to, you know, the, the painting is about the song. So I wanted to include elements of his video in it as well. What was the most challenging part of this process in creating the finished product? The most challenging part was the development. Okay. You know, developing the techniques to do it. Um, building all these ideas together into one, to one thing. Just for the appreciation of people who don't know, they, they, everyone sees the finished product, but how many, how many years, how many hours did it take to get to that? 
Well, it, it took you know years of development. Um, now that I've got all the techniques down pat, um, I've got all the system of the way I do it down mm -hmm. pat. Now I can do them much faster. Now it's um, very comfortable for me. There's no more failures. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's very comfortable now that I've developed developed all these techniques. So. so all the pieces I make are out of out of plaster, and here's here's just a sample. I'm doing, I'm making the. Um, sorry, your your fingers will get a little okay. dusty there. That's okay. I'm making the trumpet oh my God. things right. Oh my God. Yeah. So everything is made out of plaster. Uh, there's a including the record. The, the record, yeah. So, it's so plaster. This is Louis Armstrong sitting in the sun. This is his actual record. Yeah. And what's Deca? Is that it, is uh, the label the back label? then. Okay. The record label, whatever, seventy years ago. And so this is like you've got art. You've got because you, you've even got the painting underneath, like this. This is. Is there any layers to this, or is this all paint? Is that uh, th this is all paint. Um, it's it's a combination. So it's oil paint. It's ev every sort of material. I is tried to incorporate. Foam or is it That's foam painted with plaster to get the to get the sort of feel of the record, like the texture of the record. This is foam sanded down, painted with plaster. This is all work in progress, by the way. It's not. I'm still working like, on this. Do you have to? You have to sketch it before. So these are his fingers. Gonna they're going to stick out, out of okay. the painting and play this, right? So they're going to push. They're going to push down on the on the. Yeah. So it's um, it's a combination: two D, three D, digital then, media. Then, what uh, is the decision between like what goes into the portrait as far as the AR that you choose? So the AR is really uh, interesting uh, addition to this project because. It really brings you into the song experience, mm -hmm. um, and so creatively, I mean, sky is the limit. For example, the the uh, Drake portrait, you hold your phone over it, and he's sitting on the top of the canvas. Yeah, I mean that's incredible. Yeah, uh, you know, many there's there's so many uh, ideas. Cool thing. That, yeah, that, cool that, thing. I mean, imagination is, is is your only limitation to that. Basically, he gives me this, and this is my canvas. Right. And then this is my blank canvas, and then I add the digital on top of it. Right. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of music. I'm a musician, a music video director, a director of concerts as so well. So this is really a, a, a collaboration So, of I mean, Chris is definitely the uh, the driving force, but but then I'm the... Uh, our, the icing on icing on the, the sprinkles. Spice. Yeah. I'm, I'm the that spice guy. That, that the bam. Sprinkles on top. Oh, bam. Yeah, the bam! Bam! Well, with, with such a grand slam, like what is the future for song portrait? What's the what's the next step? That's a an excellent question. <laughs> uh, many steps in many different directions. Um, because this is sort of like similar to like a brand, uh, the ideas that we have are just um, there's so many. Uh, but my next thing is to do a uh, a bigger show, uh, more interactivity, um, sponsorship, um, AR everywhere, mm -hmm. AR merchandise. Uh, I saw that you could do it in the card as well. Like, yeah. What a cool concept. Yeah, you can do it anywhere. I mean, you can, you know, there's, there's so anything. many applications for it. It's, it's, it's very exciting technology. So. Do you think there's going to be another iteration of AR? Like, what do you think is going to have holograms? <laughs> Well, all of that's existing currently. Yeah. Um, all, all, a lot of it in sort of a, a exploratory phase, um, but I think it's just going to become more ubiquitous with people's everyday experience. Um, people are just getting used to the fact that they look through their phone to experience the world, um, and then I think this is just going to be a, a sort of extension of that. This is focused on music, um, but. Everything that we're doing with this, we can take and, and put it into something else. Mm -hmm. So if you want to update something every week, like like Louis Armstrong could play a different song every time you scan in. That's or so um, it's like, Cardinal, yeah. we could have different interviews. Or anything that we do is completely fluid, completely um, open to reinterpretation and to the, the evolution of both the, the, the technology side of things, but, but also creatively. Name like three bands that you want to uh, work with you on a song portrait. So uh, first of all, I would love uh, to work with Drake. Okay. Uh, because he's from Toronto. Mm -hmm. uh, we're both from Toronto. 
and he's one of the biggest music acts in the world. Um, I would like to do an album of his. Oh wow! You know, and what a get, cool get him to, idea. to sponsor it, like a full album. A full album. That's sick. And get him to uh, sponsor it, and then auction the paintings off, wow. sell them. You know. Okay. Um, so I'd like to work with Drake for sure because okay. he's from Toronto. And then, Hear that universe? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And even uh, Cardinal Fischel, I did a, a yes. painting of, uh, with him uh, yes. of him that I would love for him to. I to loved see. the hat, and I actually really uh, loved the light. You you also even incorporated lights from the ground up to like it, this this painting was lit. Yeah. The only thing missing was the scent, remember? Let's, mm -hmm. Maybe that's next. <laughs> mm -hmm. but, but it's really interesting because yeah. that's another element. Yeah. Uh, that, uh, and another addition, because all the paintings are three-dimensional, mm -hmm. they can be lit. And there's shadows and all yes. this. You can, yeah. Everything. Everything, yeah. Okay, so uh, one more. Yes. One more. We got Drake. We got Cardinal. Well, who's another band? Um, let's, well, go, let's go big. Let's go big. Big, big. Um, that's a good question. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna say, you know, like one of the classics, like, you know, Aerosmith or something, one of the Ooh. classic rock okay. big bands, but Bon Jovi maybe, you know, a band like that, like a really big rock and roll band. Awesome. Yeah, would be. I think you should like tour it. They should like, it should be on their tour bus, right? That, that's, that's the goal. That's, that's it. Yeah. I'm making a giant Stradivarius violin from top to bottom of the canvas. So I'm remaking exactly like a Stradivarius, and then I'm going to put Mozart's portrait here, oh my God. and it's going to be like a dark color, a little night music. Yay! <laughs> Yay! This is the the dream duo, the dynamic duo, and the three amigos, and uh, you know, song portrait is coming to a wall near you. Yes. See you soon.